through the entire no, I'm sorry about that. I do apologize. No, no, no. Uh, we only have a short time left for the general discussion. So uh, I would like to ask the uh, speakers who are participating in the general discussion to take their places as soon as possible. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the last session of today's conference. Thank you very much for being here to the last session. And uh, oh, even though we only have a short time left, I'm sure that Professor Lee Sang-mi, who will be presiding over this discussion, will lead us through very efficiently. Thank you very much, Professor Lee. You may begin. Thank you. I think we have about 40 minutes or less than 40 minutes to deal with many questions. The first question that I received on this piece of paper is directed to uh, Vice President Cha, but I think he left. Uh, <laughs> but this is the question that uh, we have been uh, talking about almost each year when we plan our curator's workshop. So uh, instead of answering this question, let me just read the question first. After 15 years of curator's workshop, what direction does it take from now on? Are you anticipating and or planning any changes? Um, <laughs> I, I think um, this is also the question that after each session of curator's workshop, we all discuss this question together, and we collect opinions uh, as to what it should be uh, the next year's theme, and uh, we try to accommodate the wishes of participating curators. And uh, invariably, I talk to the planners at uh, Korea Foundation. So there will be some change every time we do have some change. So I assure you that there will be better curators workshop every year. Thank you. And um, the sheet that was given to me is a question directed to uh, uh, Dr. Chong Hyung Min. Uh, the question here is, uh, in your new uh, National Museum of Contemporary and Modern Art, uh, how would you, um, how would you concentrate on uh, modern rather than uh, I don't know. Maybe contemporary. It, it says Hyundai. <laughs> contemporary can also be Hyundai. Modern can be also Hyundai. So I think, where, where is she? <laughs> Modern and contemporary. So which part do you uh, emphasize? And uh, what is the selection? What is the criteria of selection when you select these artworks? And uh, how would you preserve these artworks? That was the question. Is there, uh, who is this questioner? I don't, can you raise your hand? Oh, she was gone, he or she was also <laughs> gone. <laughs> can you well, answer? Was, oh, the first question. Uh, well, our collection is 90% of our entire collection is uh, Korean modern and contemporary art. Only 10% uh, is international contemporary art. But we'll gradually increase international art collection, but uh, for the time being, we'll strengthen our collection of Korean contemporary art. It's, um, and then another question is also directed to Dr. Chong, and this is how, how you will differentiate the uh, direction of your uh, new museum 
versus uh, the one in Kwachon. And uh, this goes on and on and on. Okay. And <laughs> this is um, um, by trans. No, it's not transfer. She says Ejon, but that's not true. Mm. Building a new structure of uh, or new branch. Uh, can you compete with the uh, British Museum of all museums? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, what percentage of um, modern and contemporary art uh, exhibition will uh, be uh, successful compared to that of British Museum? <laughs> that, that's a very uh, uh, odd question. <laughs> and also... Uh, let me say a few words afterwards about that. <laughs> Also, um, for the new museum, how can you uh, select your curators and educators and <laughs> what great criteria you have? I, these questions are not so relevant, I should say, but please answer as much as you can. Okay. <clears throat> Well, I'll first lay out you know, how I will manage for different galleries. Uh, first of all, the, I'll start with the simplest one, which is Toksugung Talas Museum. Because it was built in 1937 during the modern period, uh, the space itself is appropriate for uh, smaller size artwork uh, that is um, uh, out of the modern period. Uh, so. The Toksung Palace Museum will exhibit mainly the art of the first half of the 20th century of Korean art and also the modern international art. The second, uh, the present, present headquarter at Kwachan, uh, we have a very big um, a gallery space, but the space will be devoted to rewriting the history of contemporary Korean art. So we'll invite uh, older generation of artists up down to younger generation. By exhibiting uh, these artworks, we'll gradually accumulate and rewrite the history of Korean art. And uh, what is very important is we just opened the uh, archive research center at Kwachan. Uh, I think the, uh, the role of the museum is uh, gradually moving uh, towards uh, research, uh, research meaning uh, from exhibition to education and then to research. And uh, we are, at the present, we have over 180,000 archive materials that are related to contemporary Korean art. And that has been just, uh, that have been piled up. So now it's about time because we are expanding uh, we really have to concentrate on these archival materials. Uh, we have to, and we will also invite research fellows to our research center. And we also have a children's museum there, and we have a wonderful uh, sculpture park. But also, uh, we just opened permanent galleries for four different genres. First, uh, photography, second, architecture, third, design and fourth craft uh, so for uh, small museums within uh, the museum so Kwachan has plenty of reason uh, to visit and the uh, the museum that uh, the Seoul gallery will open to, uh, next uh, next week uh, will first exhibit um, there are eight galleries, and two galleries will be all, always devoted to the uh, exhibition of contemporary Korean art selected from our own collection, because many of the visitors who will visit Seoul will never come to Kwachan. At Kwachan, we have only 1% of international visitors, because it's pretty far from the center of the city. So the Seoul, Grand, Seoul Gallery will exhibit uh, contemporary Korean art. Uh, about 60%, 70% uh, of the space will be devoted to 
the global art scene, what's going on at the present moment. And uh, as I introduce briefly, the art of so-called um, uh, uh, art uh, that kind of um, uh, covers not just uh, fine arts, but music, uh, humanities, uh, science, uh, everything. Be because I think that's part of uh, one of the very important uh, genre, that will be one of the important genre uh, of uh, art from now on. And uh, the lastly, the Chongju Gallery will be devoted to uh, art uh, exhibition that specialize uh, craft mm -hmm. and design. Uh, and the Chongju Gallery will also uh, be art storage and gallery, art storage that people on appointment to walk in and uh, select artworks because we have art bank and government art bank. So whoever wants to borrow uh, artworks, they will come to Chengju and then walk in uh, to the storage space. So uh, it will be managed. Uh, okay, I think we need uh, more space because there are uh, uh, job to do <laughs> that cannot be done with full galleries. But anyway, um, I cannot compare our, gal our museum with our British museum <laughs> because the birth is different. British Museum was built on a, a different, you know, historical background for a different uh, purpose. Although I have been trained in history of art, which is uh, kind of based on comparison, but uh, I cannot really compare with British Museum. I will aspire to <laughs> uh, making our museum in terms of size, if I want to talk about in terms of size, as large as British Museum or Metropolitan Museum in New York. But that will be much, uh, it will take much longer, much more time. Thank you. Um, since uh, Dr. Anderson wants to respond, I will give him just two minutes. Okay, I'll, I'll respond. I'll respond quickly, very quickly. Um, in 1753, the British Museum was founded, and it included con contemporary material. I won't call it art, but contemporary material, and always has done right up to the present day. And so my question really, or the question I would generally like to put is, is why is there such a thing as a museum of modern and contemporary art? Why does it, why do these institutions run alongside museums, traditional museums, older museums, which nevertheless do bring their collections right up to date? And I'm not sure I know the answer to that. Thank you. Less than two minutes. <laughs> now, I, I remember that the fir, uh, third session discussants had uh, a series of questions uh, toward each of the three speakers. So starting from Dr. Kim Young-na, I would like to hear uh, your answers to various questions raised by Kim Hong-hee and Ha Ge hung I think there are three questions for each, so I have to, do you think I have to answer six questions? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll answer uh, those very briefly. Uh, uh, Director Kim hong Yi asked me, what is the percentage of um, continent who has, which has the Korean galleries? And as far as I know, uh, out of um, 25 countries, 71 museums, it's mostly in United States. And in Europe, I think there are one uh, in British Museum, of course, and there is one Swedish. Ah, excuse me, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but uh, these statistics up okay. here, uh, in, uh, at the end of my paper, as well okay. as Keith's paper, has very detailed statistics of everything. Okay. So okay. Thank and you. Uh, he, she, her question was whether we have, a, in, we are planning to open another um, Korean galleries in other Asian countries or as South America, Africa. Uh, but I think when you plan to open Korean galleries, 
they must have some collection. Without any collection, I think it's not really possible to open Korean galleries. Uh, and then you, then we have to loan our collection all the time. And I don't think it's a very good idea. But in terms of Asian museums, there is a, a the, like a uh, Tokyo National Museum just re renovated Asian Asian galleries, uh, and then there is a Korean section in the third floor. I think that is the only country or only museum that has a speci specifically have a gallery for Asian uh, collections. Uh, there is uh, in in term in case of Singapore, there is Asian Civilization Museums, but it is uh, it's not uh, divided into a country. Uh, it's more like a general thematically uh, divided. So I don't think that we can count on that. But uh, there is this uh, meeting between Japan, Korea, and China uh, in among national museums. And next year, we are going to have a joint exhibition of ceramics in Tokyo National Museum. And we are, we are having this meeting every two years. And there is a, another meeting of Asian National Museum Association, which also uh, op, uh, have a meeting every other year. So we have uh, these uh, uh, gatherings and meetings each other. But uh, none of us really are ready to uh, have uh, these special galleries for each country, although uh, in in case of our National Museum of Korea, we have a Department of Asian Art, which was established in 2005 when we moved to Yongsan, and there we have a we are uh, we are, we have a Japan, China, India, Southeast Asia, and Central Asian collections. Uh, on view all the time. It's our in permanent collection. Although we have not a very strong collection, uh, these days our main focus of acquisition is this Asian collection. We are buying things from New York or London uh, uh, auctions primarily. And uh, according, I mean, I, and then uh, Mr. Ha asked me, whether uh, whether we are planning, I think it's a, actually the same kind of question, whether we are planning to sh uh, show other variety of cultures, just like what Louvre does when they establish Islamic collection. And I, uh, so, so we have uh, this department, Asian art, but we don't think we can really start to collect Islamic or you know some African art. So I think we are just trying to be build more our Asian collection uh, for our uh, primary focus area. And then he asked me about whether we are also planning to collect like uh, costumes or. Instru musical instrument, and we actually uh, have, uh, besides our National Museum of Korea in Seoul, we have uh, 12 other regional national mu museums, which are on the National Museum in Seoul. And Daegu Regional National Museum, it, and every museum has a, a kind of specific focus uh, area. and. Custom is the primarily fo uh, fo uh, collected by Daegu National Museum because Daegu is the city for textile industry. So each museum has a different uh, focal point, and so costume will be collected by Daegu, and some uh, like a modern art, modern painting, and calligraphy will be the special area for Gwangju National Museum. And so, so there are this kind of uh, diversified uh, areas for each museum. 
of uh, among in national Korean museums, and then um, and then he asked me whether I'm uh, I'm considering to uh, mix with the uh, traditional art with the contemporary art. We already started a little bit, so uh, there is a uh, photography by Gu Bon Chang is uh, now on the display with the other Korean ceramics. And in Chinese gallery, there is uh, this video artist called Yi Inam. He will, if you look at his video, it's it's based on Chinese uh, painting, but then it's moving. So um, the, there is a, a bird flying, and the streams are kind of going down. And so a lot of people are really like this uh, work. And then there is uh, another big um, kind of a big lobby that we plan we plan to uh, invite contemporary artists who who is trying to uh, inherit or are trying to use the traditional technique but into a contemporary vocabulary. So right now there is a, a really gigantic mural ceramic. It's like a ceramic piece, but it it's it's a kind of between painting, sculpture, architecture. It's a very a large scale, and this artist Shin Sang Ho said that he he is using traditional technique, but he's trying to overcome what is the limitation of traditional ceramic, which is ceramic has to have a function. It's it's very small, but he make it very large, and it's very decorative. It's not. As doesn't have any function. So every year we are trying to show contemporary works that is uh, is based on uh, aesthetics or techniques of tradition, but made it very contemporary. So that is our plan. Thank you very much. It was a little too long, but I forgive <laughs> you. And um, there were some questions directed to Dr. Chung Hyung Min, but I think she, since she took the podium, I will direct the microphone to Dr. Lehman. And a uh, lot of the questions that, uh, uh, that were given to you, uh, I don't know how, uh, can you be selective? Um, I'll, I'll try. <laughs> uh, the way I heard the questions, um, most of them were about process. Um, and for us, uh, that's a particularly um, important question because we are always working at balancing a nearly encyclopedic museum with the contemporary world and our contemporary audience. Um, we adopted um, several years ago a statement, aside from the mission statement, but a, in a way a statement of purpose, which was um, that our goal was uh, to make art make sense of the world. And uh, by using that and by looking at how we function as a museum in Brooklyn surrounded by contemporary artists, truly surrounded by contemporary artists and populated by thousands of artists all the time, um, that process, whether it's the acquisition process or the exhibition determination process or how we manage our general affairs, um, is a very complicated one. In terms of acquisitions, uh, because the collection is so large and rich in almost every area, every acquisition um, has to serve more than just the purpose of filling a niche or completing a collection or buying something that we don't already have. And uh, one of the most, uh, I think, important roles of our curators is that whether the person, the curator, who is proposing an acquisition in uh, Korean art or African or contemporary brings that discussion to all the curators. 
And the curators um, have an essential role in trying to better understand how an object fits within the, the educational role of the institution. So it's not just the director or just the chief curator um, who makes those decisions, but rather all of the expertise of our many curators working together who can see how an object benefits the entire museum. And one of my great pleasures over the past decade or so is um, encouraging our curators as often as possible to purchase, to search and purchase objects together so that American Decorative Arts and the contemporary department will purchase objects together or European and um, one of the Asian collection areas might purchase objects together. I, I always think that if you have three curators who want the same object, then we've really hit the jackpot. Um, and we'll move those objects around from collection area to collection area or galleries to galleries where they serve a very different both visual and intellectual uh, purpose. Uh, because they're seen in different circumstances and they're valued by different people for different reasons in different contexts. So it's, it's a complicated uh, process uh, that takes typically more time than any of us would like. But the value associated with an object becomes greatly enlarged um, um, as a acquisition for the museum. The same thing is true with exhibitions. Um, our exhibitions need to serve uh, a purpose other than, than simply um, um, increasing the bibliography of the curator who proposes the exhibition. Uh, it has to serve the essential purposes of the museum, and that is, as I said a moment ago, to be um, a, a manner in which we can explicate issues of the world um, and often in um, trying to draw from among the different collection areas um, at the museum. Um, uh, we're very lucky in that um, in that the contemporary world, um, in the United States at least, at this point centers in Brooklyn. I may have some debate from some of our colleagues about that, but I think um, um, I would stand firm on that. Um, and that we draw so many artists into this discussion um, that uh, both artists, visual artists, writers, musicians, um, uh, who help us through their insights, and we have we have panels of these artists and um, and others who meet with our curators and meet with our educators to keep us sort of on top of what's going on right now and to better understand the questions that are being asked by our public. So we try to address those questions through the means that we have at our disposal, which is through our collections and through our exhibitions and through our educational programming. Um, but it's, you know, we are, in the sense of being um, more than just a historic art museum, um, the process gets complicated, but we hope we have good results. Thank you, Dr. Lehman. Um, Sitting here all day, I am entitled to ask you a simple question. And that is, um, uh, in my former life, I was an artist. So uh, what does it mean? You have this uh, in your logo, B I can identify, but what surrounds the B alphabet? Can you answer that? Uh, yes, quite easily, actually, because I'm asked the question all the time. Um, when we were designing, redesigning our very staid logo about a dozen years ago, uh, we hired a young group of designers uh, called 2x4. 
Um, and they worked very hard in trying to come up with a logo. And they came to us and they said they failed because they couldn't represent the museum and all the activities at the museum with a single logo. So instead, they, um, they produced 12 swirls, the one that you know and 11 others. I have a card with me that can show all of them. The only constant is that in the center, the little vacuum in the center, is the B for Brooklyn. Because for many years, uh, Brooklyn, for, for a century, uh, Brooklyn was never known as the Brooklyn Museum. It wasn't known as the Brooklyn Museum of Art. It was known as the Brooklyn, just P, just a B. Um, so this logo pops out of all of our staff's computers on a totally um, non-programmed uh, basis so that every time a letter goes out, there's a different logo. Uh. Because they wanted to kind of enact the energy and the spirit of the place. Thank you very much. I think it's a very nice logo. <laughs> um, now, I think uh, from the session one and two, uh, are there any questions uh, unanswered among the presenters and discussants? Please uh, come forward and ask questions. Keith? Let me consult my list. Kiss, are you brooding? I'm looking, I'm looking over my list of questions to see if there's something pertinent. We only have less than 10 minutes left. Tim, why don't you go next and come back to me? I'll pass. I don't remember any of the questions. It was so long ago. <laughs> oh, I did think of one thing. Very, very practical, and so it's kind of um, timely and appropriate for today's topic. And that is, as this new program of internships in museums abroad begins to supplement the Korean Curators Workshop, so far, I mean, we were just asked to join the group. Um, and I don't know if there's been internal dialogue between the member institutions, but I think it might be useful for conversations between the member, in, the member museums uh, to develop both shared and independent guidelines so that there might be a real long-term reason why a string of curators would, for example, opt to go to the Asian Art Museum working on a longer-term project so they might have more than just a one-off internship, uh, intern coming from Korea, or developing kind of shared guidelines, like you said, Sung Mi, about six months versus one year, what would be more appropriate, so that um, we might be invited into those discussions with the foundation across right. the museums. I can, I can answer that question briefly. And that is, if you go into the uh, website of Korea Foundation, there is a section. And you uh, are supposed to apply, whether you are an individual or an institution. And if uh, the two, an individual and not institution matches, then you, you get to have uh, an intern or a series of interns. I think uh, Guggenheim Museum also had an intern from Korea Foundation. So uh, it's not just limited to the Asian Art Museum. Samples. Oh, no, I know that. But what I'm saying is rather than the Korea Foundation being the sole hub, that maybe the, the different member museums communicate directly between themselves to help the foundation supplement guidelines and goals for the program. Do you um, get what I mean? Yeah, I think that that is possible. And maybe uh, you can initiate uh, the program and uh, talk to the Korea Foundation and uh, 
put an appropriate uh, section or item in the uh, Korea Foundation's website, then it can be done more efficiently. I, I think the idea of that program as a supplement to the workshop is a, is a really good one, and I think it could be developed into something very robust. Mm -hmm. Dr. Xu, have you any qu more questions? Well, like, like Tim, I don't remember. I remember there are a lot of good questions, but the following presentations were so interesting that uh, <laughs> my brain was spent on absorbing them. So if there are any questions, I'd be more than happy to answer. Uh, is there any question from the floor at this point? I will receive just one question because our time is completely up. Well, I, if, is that all right if we end our session here? <laughs> Thank you very much for all the participants and discussants and above all, for those who kept the floor so uh, full all day long, thank you very much. Thank you, Professor E. Uh, that concludes a long day of conference, and the Career Foundation is deeply appreciative of your attendance and support for this conference and Career Foundation's programs. We hope you take away from this conference all you came for and more. Once again, Thank you, and we hope to welcome you back to one of these gatherings again in the future. Thank you very much. Oh, and then I have an announcement for the workshop participants. Uh, Ms. Ho Jung Lee would like to see you up front. She, I think she, she's going to give you something. But <laughs> and the uh, speakers, for us, for the speakers, your car is waiting downstairs to take you to your dinner. So. Um, our, one of our staff will be outside waiting to guide you to your car. Thank you.